Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Crater, Shadows Over Soulside. This is a very Diablo-esque action RPG. It's like an isometric loot fest basically. It came out on Steam a couple of days ago, but I have had beta access for nearly a month now, so I think I'm relatively qualified to talk about Crater and, you know, the strengths and weaknesses that I've had with the game so far and continue to have with the game uh, now that it is post-release. So this is, you know, calling it Diablo is not necessarily fair, but it's very much like Diablo almost mixed with like a party Dota system. Now, it's worth noting that there is a online multiplayer mode here, but for some reason it is still disabled in the full version of the game. That's one of those things that I thought was going to come with the retail version of the game, but, you know, the single player is, is robust in its own right, but I really thought that online was gonna push this over the top. But anyway, let's go play offline, uh, new game and continue again. I guess it's one of those things where you can only have one save file going at each individual time, which is also kind of shitty, but whatever. We're going to continue. I am very, very early into the game so far. And I'm not going to talk too much about the story, because like if you actually play the game, I don't want to ruin the story for you. But I will, I guess, set it up a little bit and show you know as much gameplay as I am capable of showing as we go through this loading screen here. So basically, imagine like Dota characters, or like League of Legends type characters, which are my three guys right here. Uh, but we're controlling them in a party system very similar to something like a Torchlight or a Diablo, etc, etc. So, you know, by using right-click, we can sort of move around and we can push the camera towards the edges of the- or push the mouse towards the edges of, edges of the screen to adjust our camera here. But the kind of cool thing is that we don't just right-click on enemies to attack them. I mean, we can do that, and that's, I guess, going to be your main attack. But each character also has abilities. So, for example, if you look down here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Each one of those has their own ability. And, you know, 1 and 2 are tied to, like, my bruiser character here, who is, like, my main DPS tank. Uh, 2 and 3, or sorry, 3 and 4 are tied to my medicus, which is, like, my healer or support class. And 5 and 6 are tied to my regulator, which is kind of like a, like a crowd control class. He's a guy that does, like, stuns and disables and slows and stuff like that. So when I'm controlling all of them, I can, like, right-click on an enemy. We'll see in a second. And I could use, like, the cleave ability. Oh, no, I can't. I guess I can't do it when we're in town. But anyway, I'll show you that a little bit later. So this is the first town that we are showing up in here. Uh, and it works very much like, you know, your standard RPG. Basically, we see people with big question marks above their heads. Hello. We can click on them, and they will give us a little bit of a dialogue choice here. I haven't seen too much in the way of, like, dialogue trees. It seems like everything is set up pretty linearly, but hey. Wendy Godding says, Are you heading outside the town, like, sometime in the future? The answer to that question is yes, for sure. She needs meat. Oh, I got some meat for you, Red. I can't continue that sentence. Okay, so she wants... Delicious looking wolves. She needs five of them. We will accept. So now we have kind of like a quest that we can continue with. So as we go along here, we will get more and more missions. I think if I look at my mission log, uh, I have two missions right here. One of them is... Hey, get out of here. I don't need to see this. Uh, one of them is kind of like related to our town, and one of them is related to our main story. So our town quest is kill five forest varges, and if we do that, we'll get a damage booster, which is kind of like an upgrade that we can apply to our, our characters. Uh, and our main story is find the missing Relinus scriptures in Merkmala Cave. Merkmala is located near Normalm. Hopefully I did not butcher the pronunciation of that too much. But anyway, let's go out here and actually do some questing. So you can see just what the hell I'm talking about. Just kind of wanted to show off a little bit of the hub world and, and show you that there's not much in the way of cutscenes in the game. Uh, cutscenes are shown in kind of like a, a Shank style, like graphic novel style, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Now it's cool because there is also an overworld. So as I travel between towns, I don't just like... It doesn't give you a dialogue pop-up to be like, Hey, talk to the caravan owner and he'll take you to the next town. Instead, we can actually walk it ourselves, even though you don't see our characters walking. And we actually are subject to random encounters when we come out here. Which I kind of thought we would run into, but I guess not. Instead, we're just going to go to the caves near Merkmala. And this is going to function, I assume... Uh, I did this quest earlier, but it's been like a week or something, so they may have updated it. But yeah, I assume this is just going to be like a dungeon that you might find in a Diablo game. So the way we're going to do this, you can see we come across... These guys, and I can use my 5, that will help cause my regulator to stun him. I can use my regulator 6, and you can see the cooldowns down there at the bottom as well. Uh, I can use 1 and 2 from my bruiser, which will just give him the ability to do some damage. And when this thing dies, it will give us loot. 1 krona, I believe is what that is. Uh, the Swedish currency, but I you know, don't know the exchange right there. And also, maybe he dropped some more loot? No, he didn't. So now I can talk about my abilities. So if you look at my bruiser, which is this guy right here, 1 and 2 do like... Oh, I can't do it unless there's an enemy. Never mind. Maybe I can do two, yeah. Two is Stomp, which basically just does more damage. Uh, then we have our Medicus, and our Medicus, using three, can actually give a burst heal to someone, or by using four, can give a channeled heal. And uh, I think I talked about it, but our Regulator, which is the dude with the gun here... Okay, Medicus, you can stop now. 
uh, our regulator, which is the dude with the gun here, can actually do stuns and slows. So you'll see that more in combat as we deal with more than one enemy at a time. Do we have Vargs here? If so, oh, Stray Hund. So basically the way I deal in combat is just right click on everything, very similar to like a Diablo style, uh, and just spam my abilities whenever I have the chance. But these things are relatively easy to kill. So basically every enemy that I've come across in the game drops loot, we'll just pick that up. And we can take a look at our inventory very fast. And you can see what I've got. Zero weapons, I've got some valuables, uh, which some of these are going to be quest items and some of them are going to be things that I can sell for a lot of money. Blueprints, we might not even get a chance to talk about. And then we have upgrades. So upgrades are things that we can actually implant in our characters to make them better. So here we have a stamina implant that increases, sol increases the soldier's stats by plus five stamina. So if I bring up our character screen here, what I can do is actually, let's, this is our bruiser, this is our medicus, this is our regulator. I can go to our bruiser, let's say, because I spam his abilities a lot. Go to implants, and we will put a stamina booster right into his brain there. So this increases his stats by plus five stamina. So awesome, he should not be... Uh, as puny as he is right now, and cool, I got an achievement. So achievements are working in this game. They weren't working yesterday. Uh, now you might have also seen, let's just do this before we get into combat, that, that one of my characters leveled up. I'm not sure who it was though. I guess it was Kale and Finn leveled up. Now I believe you can only rank characters up five times, but the way that the game kind of compensates for this, it, uh, maybe compensate is not the right word, but the way the game deals with this is you can get more and more heroes on your roster. So let's say you're done with Kal as a bruiser. You can hire another bruiser and get him up to rank 5, and he'll have different abilities, I think, and also different uh, properties. But for now, we're just going to keep doing what we're doing here, uh, using our skills, using our slows, particularly... There he goes, our regulator leveling up. Uh, using our skills and using our bruiser skills in particular to... Get ourselves up here. So I've got a blueprint. If I go here, we can load up our blueprints tab. I just said I was going to not talk about these, but maybe I will. So this is related to crafting as well. If I right-click, I can learn this blueprint. And then when I come across a crafting table in the game, which is something I doubt we will see, uh, then I can use that crafting table to build a defense injector. But crafting so far for me has not really worked fantastically well. I haven't tried it since the retail version. Uh, or sorry, since the beta version, but a lot of what I played before was work in progress, even up until the day that the game released. So we got a little bit more loot here, and I guess I'll talk about weapons very quickly, because we're here, and I think that's pretty much the whole learning curve of the game after I talk about weapons. So, you know, as in the standard loot fest, you get weapons all the time, and what we can do is go to our Medicus here and see right now he's using Pistola, 3.8 damage per second, 2 to 4 damage. We can use Guardian's Grease Gun. Uh, the green indicates that it's a rare weapon, or a unique weapon. Uh, and this one obviously has higher DPS, so we'll just slot that in there right there. And that's really all the equipment you have to worry about. At least so far, I've never had a situation where I had to worry about, like, what kind of armor my dudes were wearing. Which leaves us to focus on the combat. And I really do think that one of the strengths in this game is the combat. But, um, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about how I feel about Crater so far. I've probably spent, with the retail version, I've probably spent about two hours with it. But with the, the beta version, you know, from a month ago up until the day before this game released... Uh, I spent maybe uh, four to five hours with it. Oh, what's going on here? I got an achievement, and then I couldn't move for a second. Uh, I spent maybe four to five hours with it. I like the aesthetic, and I think the combat system is really neat, and it gives you a little bit more uh, micromanaging to do, because you're controlling three people at once. Like, I'm just basically box-clicking here, uh, and then controlling everyone, basically like select all, as I would call it, like control-clicking in Dota, if you're playing like an Enchantress or a Chen, just controlling all your creeps with, with one mouse click. Uh, but you can also, you know, micro them. Like, if I hit Q, then I select my Bruiser, or W, select my Medicus, and I can move these people around. But uh, generally speaking, I find the combat a lot more hectic than in Diablo, which is a positive thing, at least in my opinion. I found Diablo on normal mode was stupid easy, like, casual mode easy. And Crater is kind of refreshing in the sense that it is way more difficult than that. Wait, there's a crafting table. Cool, let's try this. So, Defense Injector requires a Syringe. I do not have a Defense Booster. I do not have and something else. So I definitely cannot craft right now. Uh, but I didn't know that was there. We can come up here and shop with these guys, but I, I actually don't need anything right now. And I don't think if I bring up my inventory... Eh, 357 krona. It's enough to get you blackout drunk, but it's not enough to buy anything really. But it's nice that there's a shop there, so if we get too much loot, we can just sell it. Uh, and yeah, yeah, the game is substantially diff more difficult on normal mode, which is what I'm playing this on. Uh, than Diablo on normal mode, which is extremely positive in my opinion. Uh, that was one of the things that has really bugged me with Diablo 3 so far, is the ease of the game on normal mode. And I'm not going to turn this into a like Diablo 3 versus Crater argument necessarily. Uh, I think these are both games that have their merits. Oh, definitely. I'm just microing my Medicus essentially right here to heal the, the Regulator, because my Regulator always dies 
And you can see these guys level up really quickly, so we'll pick up whatever loot we got here. Uh, but at the same time, like, I've had problems with the game. I, it, for some reason, it seems rushed or incomplete to me. The fact that there's, like, they've been talking about the online multiplayer, and that was one of the things that in, like, the the a promo materials for the game that looked really promising is the ability to go online with like your friends and actually play this which i think is where the multiplayer or where the replay value comes in a loot fest like this is what well, we got more loot yes uh in a loot fest like this is the ability to play with your friends like if you're playing torchlight 2 which is coming out soon or if you're playing diablo 3 you're probably not spending too much time playing it in single player at least past the first time that you play it instead you're going to spend the bulk of your time in multiplayer playing it with your friends uh, and the fact that that doesn't exist in Crater yet, and I say yet, oh, this is going to be a difficult fight. Uh, I say yet because you never know, it could come, but you know, you see this with indie games all the time when you're, when you're talking to the developers and you're like, okay, well, or they say things like, ah, oh, you know, we, we don't have time to get online multiplayer out before release, but we'll have it out, you know, in a couple of months. And then oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes it just doesn't end up happening. Uh, so, I don't know, the fact that it's not packaged in with the retail version right now, I mean, obviously you get access to the updates in the future. But the fact that it's not packaged in with that right now is a little bit discouraging and a little bit worrying. The single player in its own right seems okay so far, the story seems fine, there's, there's clearly been some effort put into it. The game is extraordinarily Scandinavian, which I know a lot of people like, uh, so that, that might appeal to you. And you know the voice acting in the cutscenes is good, but you don't get too too many of them. And there doesn't seem to be much in the way- ooh, we got a new regulator weapon here, let's check that out quickly. Um, there doesn't seem to be much in the way of like branching paths. Check out regulator weapon right now does 4.4. This one does 4.4, but plus five stamina, so we'll definitely equip that. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem to be much in the way of like branching paths with the dialogue, like you know, in I don't know, like a Mass Effect game or something. Um, you can definitely alter the story based on your decisions. This one seems much more linear, uh, but again, that's only of what I have played so far. I haven't played through the entirety of the single player because the beta version, for one reason or another only had 30% of the final game in it, but anyway, let's go to implants on our bruiser. I thought I put an implant in the bruiser already. Well, let's put another one in there. And why not another one in here? We'll just give this dude crazy stamina. Uh, and we'll come down here. So yeah, it seems linear, and I mean, that's kind of the thing that you would expect from an indie game like this. Like, this is 20 bucks. This is not Diablo 3's price. It's not even Torchlight 2's price. So you would expect it to be a little bit more simplistic. And I think in the combat, this game shines, uh, but I have like weird, weird problems with it. It seems rushed, it seems a little bit unfinished. Uh, it's, it's repetitive, but all of these games are repetitive. The one positive thing I will say about its repetition is that uh, the, loot, the loot fest aspect of it actually seems consequential. Again, I'm sorry to keep bringing Diablo 3 into this. I hope this doesn't cause a shitstorm in the comments. Uh, but the loot, again, I'm talking only about normal mode on Diablo 3, didn't feel consequential because the enemies that you're fighting, again, on normal mode, were, were so easy that, oh, like, this gives me 20.4 DPS and this gives me 20.7 DPS. Well, it doesn't even matter if I pick it up because it's going to be so easy for me to kill all the enemies that I come across anyway by just, um, you know, mashing my mouse button and abilities on them. Uh, in, in craters so far, I've felt like the loot has been consequential and you don't get as much of it. Like, you seem to hold on to a weapon for a little bit longer than you hold on to it in other games of this sort. Um, but I don't know, like, the... I, I can't help but feel like I've been largely positive about the game so far in my comments, but there, there are times when playing it feels unsatisfying. Like, there, there's currently a glitch where uh, if you alt-tab out of the game, then the interface doesn't quite work right when you come back. Like, the only way I can explain it is if you try to, like, stretch out the camera, you can't stretch it out down, but when you try to stretch it out right, it goes, like, 500 miles an hour. And as someone who alt-tabs a lot, uh, as you might expect, that is a huge pain in the ass, and I expect there are more people like me out there. Just things like that that you feel like should be kind of taken care of before the game actually ships. Uh, you know, ships being a loose word here, or a, a loosely used word here. Uh, and other things, like the game doesn't run perfectly in windowed mode. Like again, you, you run into the same like camera problems, and sometimes you like try to click on something in the interface, but in windowed mode it just doesn't line up. By and large, I still feel like this is um, you know a pretty worthwhile experience if you're into these kind of games. But I think it has the misfortune of coming out at like probably the worst time in like the last few years uh, for a game of this kind, like an isometric top-down action RPG like this. Uh, because Diablo 3 just came out and people love that game, regardless of how I feel about it, which is, you know, still largely positive, I guess. Um, people love Diablo 3 and that's a game that they're going to be playing for, you know, if not weeks, then months, and if not months, maybe years. 
There's more weapons that I will check out very quickly. Um, and Torchlight 2 comes out in like, you know, between two and six months. And I feel that this is not as good as the Torchlight 2 beta that I played. Especially since there's no multiplayer yet, which again, just boggles my mind. Um, and I don't think it's as good as Diablo 3 either, which you would expect, I mean, considering that this is a third of the price. So, it's one of those games that I'm like, yeah, it's worthwhile, but is that enough? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I can't help but feel that I think people might be dis a little disappointed if they uh, get Crater thinking that, like, this is going to be a Diablo killer or something. Like, I can't say, like, if you didn't like Diablo 3, you're going to love Crater. This is not the... The Diablo Haters action RPG. It's very, very similar. Uh, there are things I like about it compared to Diablo 3, and there are things I dislike about it compared to Diablo 3. But overall, I feel like if you were not a fan of Diablo 3, you will enjoy Torchlight 2 probably more than you've enjoyed Crater. And I mean, that is all hinging on the game as I'm playing it right now, because it's the only way I can judge it. I'm not gonna, I'm just finding like flavor text here. Uh, I'm not gonna judge it based, I'm not gonna say things like, well, when the online multiplayer comes in, then maybe things are gonna be better, or when, you know, this and this and this are fixed, then it's gonna be better. Like, this game is out now, retail. Uh, they, they want, they're charging you 20 bucks for it, and while I feel like if you get, if you pay 20 bucks, that's not a whole lot of money, you're probably get, gonna get your money's worth. If you're only gonna play one action RPG this year, you should probably play either Torchlight 2 or Diablo 3. If you're gonna play three action RPGs this year, then then there's probably room for this in your in your time. Um, but again, I, I can't get over the decision to not include some online multiplayer like that. It, it, even delay, I would rather. I, I understand maybe where they're coming from is maybe we'll ship it a little incomplete and we'll be able to you know push out the complete version for free as soon as possible I understand that perspective you know get the game out to the people who have supported it or been waiting for it for a long time but for people like me who basically just became of this became aware of this game a couple of months ago uh, I, I think it sends a bad impression and I apologize if the devs are watching this like like, like I said the game is 100% competent uh, apart from a few weird graphical glitches uh, but oh, there's, there's our quest item right there okay uh, apart from uh, some graphical and interface glitches, uh, works totally fine, but it's just, I don't know, it doesn't feel like as satisfying an experience as the time that I spent with Diablo 3, which I'm, I, I think is okay, but I'm not really a huge fan of, and Torchlight 2, which I really enjoyed. Anyway, um, one thing I do really like in this, and this is something that's handled in Diablo 3 as well, is there's like an extract team to surface option, so now that we've completed our quest, we can actually just extract our team to the surface, which might take us to the world map. This is actually the first time I've used it, but I read it in the user manual. Yes, excellent. So now we can go and complete our quest here. Oh, and here's a, a random encounter. So this actually I do like. I do like that there is this kind of overarching world map, and occasionally uh, you'll run into these encounters. Oh, this is not a random encounter. This is actually a story encounter, but this is cool. You'll get a, you'll get a feel for how the story is told, and I think this will actually lead into a cutscene. Anyway, caravan seems to be overrun. There are survivors, or there are no survivors, maybe it said. Apparently, I cannot read. And there's our buddy Bloodclaw down there, who we won't be able to talk to, but I think, yeah, he'll have some sort of cutscene here. So as usual, I will read the text on screen. Lessons were learned by all sides, my friend. With an open mind, one learns something every day, and today is no exception. That was Bloodclaw, or that was Mysterious Figure. Bloodclaw says, just remember, we'll do this my way, yada yada yada, I am going to stop reading. Basically, we have Mysterious Figure and uh, Bloodforge over here who looks a little bit like Jason Voorhees mixed with the Dark Knight Rises version of Bane. Uh, and I'm gonna, just going to get this stuff over here. Bloodclaw is like a tribal leader or a gang leader that we've been warned about before. I have a feeling he will become one of the bosses that we fight a little bit later. But anyway, that is all over. Investigate the area. Well, I guess we have mostly investigated the area. And we find like a letter here. Again, this is story text that I will skip over so that we don't spoil anything. But this is very, very early in the game. Maybe like an hour or less into the game. So if you are thinking about playing it, don't feel like I just ruined like a substantial plot point for you or something. Yes, we are going into chapter two now. So we will get another cutscene. Our would-be champions happen upon a grisly scene of death and destruction, highlighting the wickedness brewing in the crater. And by fishing up that soaked, mysterious message, a chain of events was set in motion, destined to shake the foundations of the crater, and affect every living soul within and beneath. So pretty much every cutscene that I've seen so far has been exactly like that. It'll be like, 
an image or a series of images very similar to, I don't know, something like Tunnel Rats 1968, if we're going to have an unfavorable comparison, uh, with, with a very charismatic Scandinavian voice actor talking over top. So what I will do is I will finish this quest. Uh, I'm leaving out a lot of complexity with respect to Crater here. I haven't talked anything about the story or the like context of the game, because I feel like that is... I'm not going to say superfluous, but not as important as the actual core gameplay itself, which is where you're going to be spending a lot of your time. We'll talk to Alma, who is our quest giver mostly. Cool, so we got the scripture, scriptures. Um, she's just asking us about the letter right now. So we are going to give the letter to someone, and she's going to give us another job. Oh, what she's doing actually now is introducing us to a new character who can join our party. So I'm just going to skip over this, blah, blah, blah. Text uh, so far, like the dialogue from the characters, has been funny, and there is occasionally like some good. It's not really simlish, but it's like some funnily funny sounding voice acting in here. That that adds a little bit of flavor, which is nice. But anyway, to complete this quest, we just go over here and talk to Hooks. This is something that I should have touched on a little bit earlier, but I guess better late than never. Anyway, uh, so I'm just gonna again skip through basically all this dialogue. Now I will bring up my character menu. And as you can see, if it loads here, there we go. So now we can only have three people in our team at any one time, but we can switch new players in at any time. So if I wanted to get rid of my regulator, for example, I could uncheck him and then check Hooks instead. Now Hooks is a slayer, which is another kind of like fairly high damage class that has relatively low HP, I guess. You can see like high strength, high stamina. Not very smart, not very defendable, and his focus is very low as well. So he's kind of like a frenzy type character, or a berserker, I guess would be the correct terminology. But I like sticking with kind of our default party. Uh, and these are the four classes in the game. Uh, Bruiser, Medicus, Regulator, and our Slayer. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I'm leaving out a, a fair amount of complexity in the game. There is crafting, which I haven't really spent too much time with, because like I said, it kind of was busted in the beta version. Uh, there is the ability to like recruit other people into your party, which is cool, but you can, you're also just fine with the existing party. Uh, but by and large, that's, that's my time with Crater so far. There's been a lot of quests that basically boil down to, hey, like, go to nearby town, clear out dungeon. And I guess that's kind of standard for the genre. But I can't help but feel that, although this game is decent, it could have been a lot more if maybe they just, I don't know, waited another two or three months before they actually released it. Uh, and, uh, of course, this will all be irrelevant if you're watching this three months from now and online multiplayer is in the game and it actually works. Uh, but for now, I don't know. I give it a tepid thumbs up, but I feel like if you're all action RPG'd out... Crater is not going to be the game for you. I would recommend that most people just wait for Torchlight 2, uh, which, you know, judging from the beta, she seems to be shaping up quite nicely. Or, you know, there's always Diablo 3, but this has a cool aesthetic. Uh, the combat is a little bit more, I would say, micromanagey than Diablo, which is something that I actually do enjoy. It feels like I'm actually doing something apart from just holding the left and right mouse button down. Uh, but by and large, I think this is uh, an inferior game to those other two action RPGs that I've compared it to constantly here. But, you know, that being said, still a uh, tepid thumbs up. This isn't a bad game, it's just um, not a great game by comparison. And admittedly, that is pretty heady comparison. But in any case, as always, thank you guys for watching. You can find this on Steam now for $19.99 or $14.99. Shit. Well, it's either $15 or $20. Bucks. I've totally forgotten now. But as always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.